we now move on to um, recreation and cultural services? It says recreational and cultural services. Anytime I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would like to know how we, when we change to recreation and cultural services. Well, the budget's always reflected that I'm responsible for the top half, and then it goes municipal archives back to corporate services. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, go on. Please go ahead. Uh, we have, uh, uh, quite frankly, just two items on our supplemental request that are both offset by um, equal amounts of revenue. The first is for uh, a training conference or mini class conference, which is our operating software. Uh, Esquimalt has traditionally been a leader in this area within the region and what we do is to reduce our staff training budgets and sending staff out of town for um, upgrade training as we go through our software. We host a regional conference uh, with our sister municipalities in the region and then we invite outside municipalities up island to come and join us at a cost recovery basis. So the 15000 is for Esquimalt to host the conference. Uh, there's also 15000 revenue offset so the net tax uh, request is zero. Uh, special event development, staff are requesting $100,000 in expenditure and a subsequent $100,000 in increased revenue. And this is to meet council's strategic priority of special event management. What this is, is hosting events uh, primarily in our parks and at Archie Browning to generate increasing revenues. Uh, and part of that is to say is identified council's strategic plan. So there's a net zero benefit to that. Uh, the operational items for overtime on staff pay, uh, we were put on notice during collective bargaining in the fall. Uh, staff have removed that line item and therefore that's no longer uh, on the budget. If there's any questions, those are the two items I have. Councilor Morrison. Thank you. So just a general question for the public's benefit. Uh, you're not projecting or you're not planning for any um, uh, membership fitness pass fee increases as part of the 2012 budget. Your Worship, through to Councillor Morrison, if uh, staff at this moment with this proposed budget are not uh, encouraging uh, or recommending fee increases at this moment, however, should Council decide to adjust policy, then we would then be pursuing that as an alternative. Um, the surveys we have done intermunicipally put our programs and service fees directly where we want them to be. Uh, they're aggressively priced within the market. On the rental side, we're a little still on the high side, but all the other municipalities are uh, subsequently increasing fees. Uh, we have found through operating uh, models that we're better off uh, becoming aggressive on our program side, which is where we're seeing the increase in revenues. Is on the program development, not necessarily just on the rental fees and admission prices, but our admission prices and our rental fees are uh, aggressively priced within the current market. Just sort of a second question too, uh, related to that is also uh, 2012 budget does not include any reduction in uh, service times, uh, hours of operation, days of operation, correct? Your Worship, through to Councillor Morrison, at this moment, with the proposed uh, recommendations uh, from Parks and Rec, there is no decreases in course service. Thank you very much. Further questions? I would just like to clarify the uh, special event development. And if you can refresh my memory as to whether that was an item that was deferred from last year forward, um, I thought there was some funding in the past uh, that was to start that process or move forward to that process. Uh, Your Worship, uh, in previous budget staff have uh, passed two budgets that I've worked here. Uh, we recommended a marketing position uh, for special event development. Uh, subsequently, those items have been removed from the budget staff are now, are now recommending that this has been done in-house uh, and I'm taking a quite active role in this. So there's, it's, this is not for salary, it's not for employment. Uh, this is to go out and secure uh, events. Thank you. And uh, the cost recovery is, uh, the outlays this year, uh, how long would it take to cost recover? Uh, Your Worship, we're anticipating immediate, uh, which is why there is zero impact to the budget. Uh, this okay. is for event services and event management and the procurement of such events. So therefore it's ticket revenue, it's sponsorship revenue, it's all offset. So we are uh, anticipating uh, zero net to the, to the tax base. Great, thanks very much. Further questions? Sports, sports Center, did we go through that? Oh, okay, thank you. 
Okay, municipal archives, a uh, couple of items here. Um, one is a one-time um, uh, overtime uh, provision. Uh, the archivist does attend quite a few committee meetings and he's anticipating this year he's uh, going to be quite involved in the centennial celebrations as well. Uh, being a union uh, uh, member, he does um, uh, get uh, overtime for that, so this accounts for that. Uh, annual conference cost. Um, uh, to date, he has not been attending conferences. There are quite a few uh, ones that he thinks would be beneficial for our municipality to be involved in, and we would like to take advantage of um, uh, at least one of those conference uh, conferences per year. So this will be in addition to the annual uh, core. Uh, we had a new uh, software program put in uh, to archives a couple of years ago uh, called Past Perfect. Um, however, there is an ongoing staff training. Um, that uh, should be, or it's not ongoing actually, it's a one-time staff training just to make sure that they're using the uh, uh, software to its full capacity. And the last one is the scanner and printer. Uh, the equipment at the uh, archives office is uh, quite antiquated and the, uh, the new scanner and the printer would allow them to do better reproductions. There's quite a, a bit of public demand for um, um, copying of the materials there and their uh, current equipment doesn't really um, accommodate that very well. Thank you. Questions, Councillor Morrison? Just on the, the FT, or the position of the archivist, uh, that's a relatively new position, if I, my memory is really right. I think it's just been recently added to staff in the last couple of years, the last couple of budgets. Yeah, I think it's June 2010, I seem to recall, the current archivist. Okay. And, so, and that is a, that's a part, that's a half FTE, is that correct? 30 hours per week. 30 hours per week, okay, and prior to that it was always done by a volunteer, correct? Yes, it was, correct. Um, so was there any flexibility with the FTE hours in that position, rather than in terms of 30 hours versus 20 hours, or? I did, the reason I say is because it, it is, most of the positions we've had have been, been doing the the FTE equivalent uh, amount of hours for, for decades, some of them, and this one is so new and, and somewhat experimental. Um. I think we would discuss that with, with the current um, um, employee and see if, if those hours were warranted. I'm not sure if, if and he's asking for one time overtime, I don't know if that's if he's retired at that point or point six or, or Um, thank you, Chair. Um, one comment I might make, and I, I don't know the whole thing, um, but I think that the position of archivist is uh, we require some sort of expertise. Um, I don't think I qualify, uh, and so I, 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 uh, I think that it's important that we, we get the right people in there. Um, but I, I take Councillor Morrison's point, and you know maybe that's something for us to look at. The other thing I wondered was if there was ever any revenue opportunities uh, for the archives. So I know that there's a lot of requests coming forward from different people wanting to know about past family members and, and past um, uh, events that went on in, in, in people's lives. And I know that sometimes if there's an extensive amount of research that happens, whether there's, there's any costs associated with that, of that, and I, I don't know whether there's, there's any opportunities for us to you know, gain many revenue, even if it's the cost of the paper for the printing. I don't know that. So I'm just asking that of staff, but through Chair to Nicole, who do you know? We, we don't know of any opportunities at this point. We would certainly have the discussion with the architects to see what's done in other areas. Thank you. Councilor McCann. Thank you, Yuri. Uh, on your overtime, um, he's a union member and he is paid on a contract or is he paid hourly? Paid hourly. Paid hourly. Any further, further questions? Just one, and I know you've already examined it, but I have to ask it anyways. Um, we do have um, municipal archives trust fund. 
um, and also if this is for extra work uh, related to Centennial, are there other opportunities from where we can recover those funds? I know that some of the work that he has taken on, and, and I'm very excited about it, is with um, the Mayor's Golf Tournament and how it's going to become a, a, an historical golfing event of which he is um, very well qualified uh, and has significant connections. Um, and the other is our uh, Centennial Ale, uh, and uh, of, of which he's very well qualified as well. So. Uh, that's why I'm just, you know, wondering: are there are there other places within the funds where we can, we can support those? Um, yeah, so, question asked, and, and I received my answer. But always good to ask. Councilor McCain. Thank you, Bridget. Um, I have the same queries about the overtime and the $500 because if you go back to the centennial celebration, uh, they've got down communication coordinator $36,000. 14 hours per week, why cannot that 500 that we're going to give to the archivist to work with Centennial come out to Centennial? position and the other part of the salary the 0.4 portion is quoted to the centennial celebration okay so and I guess this would be obviously getting into the 2013 budget but after we're done with the centennial they'll go back to 0.6 communications that will come out for discussion on the next worksheet okay thank you uh, any further discussion on no. okay so we can move on and where libraries there and offsetting reductions uh, Okay, so we've got a couple of minutes with a number of stars. So uh, we would like to move on now uh, to the staff request. And so that is going to the way down the top. Am I right? That's right, it's the one page sheet. So these are the uh, staff documentary <coughs> request. Uh, that have been included or being requested in uh, the budget uh, under administration and this was a good segue into this discussion. This has to do with the communications coordinator and you're absolutely right. Uh, right now he, he's uh, in the budget full time but point six of his position is coded to his communications coordinator position and point four uh, or 14 hours is coded to the Centennial Committee. Um, budget and the request or the recommendation from staff is at the end of 2012 to have the communications coordinator position uh, be a full-time position with 100% of the cost coded to administration. 
that um, does not result in an increase to the current budget, um, but any increases in staffing always come to council during budget. Thank you. Councillor Hodgins. Well, certainly, I support the need for a full-time communications coordinator. I think uh, all the issues and challenges that we deal with, there's a significant number of those come back to the need for enhanced communications, uh, improved communications, additional communications, and uh, I see a real struggle currently with part-time position to even come close to meeting our needs as, as an organization to better communicate within the organization, externally to our customers and key stakeholders. So you know, it, it, it all comes back to our strategic priorities for me in terms of economic development and all of those positive initiatives. And if you're not able to get there because of the absence of communication, then I really believe that, that we need to, and I would like to get there sooner than later to a full-time communications coordinator for this topic. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Morrison. Um, so we, we're basically changing the position because we're going from a point six communications officer to a full-time MTE communications officer, coordinator, sorry. And to me that means we've actually changed the job description because it's no, it's no longer, when the old job, is, sorry, the existing job description is based on point six uh, hours availability. Full time position has probably, I'm guessing, a lot more expectations or um, responsibilities to fill those extra, that additional time. So, would that not negate there being a, a new posting or a new competition for that? I, I would expect addition? so, but I will defer the final decision to the discussion with the HR department. I don't believe that that would be the case, but um, I'm not the expert in labor relations or human resources, so. I'll, I'll reserve that and have a discussion with the HR manager. Okay, so the prior prior to that discussion, this assumes that that person would just automatically go to a full-time hours. This is that assumption, yes. Further counsel? No. Council will have, sorry, just for the chair, so council will have some input on that drop the expansion. I think any stream. further discussion on this should be in camera. Okay. It's a, it's a personality. You're, you're talking about a specific staff person, and, and it's not appropriate to have a uh, okay. meeting. Sorry, my, my intention was to talk about the specific job description, not any any individual whatsoever. So just to be clear. Um, staff, I just need some clarification because uh, this position right now is um, being funded under Centennial, right, for the year 2012. Would this not then go into the 2013 budget? Uh, and that's what we're saying. We didn't say we put, there's no ma amount under the budget request. There is an amount under indicating that it will become annual core after 2012. Thank you. Wasn't looking at the boxes. Which is why the indication is it would actually not impact the budget amount, the total budget that's, that's for 2012 but it is a change in staffing. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Councilor Brayman. Just to wrap my head around this, so we would still want to approve this to be part of CORE next year, this year, or can we just leave it at business? If you want a full-time communications coordinator, I understand Count, uh, Councilor Morrison is talking about how would that process work. I think that's a decision that can be made outside of whether you want a full-time communications coordinator or not, the, the, the details of that. I, um, we, well, we wouldn't be recommending this except that looking at council's strategic priorities, I am not going to be able to resource reaching those priorities without a full-time communications coordinator. That includes looking at going paperless and, and video taping or, ta or, or recording meetings and all the rest. I need someone to be able to do that. But and I, I would need a full-time person to do that. and, and Looking at, we're looking at starting that in, at, at the end of the year. Okay. But 
Now we can move on to information technology. So information technology, you should have a business case uh, document in front of you for that position, and I think um, if you have any questions, I will try to answer them. Of course, recognizing that I'm not the expert in IT, but I can say that, again, looking at council strategic priorities with um, looking at different forms of communication, when you talk about communication, it usually falls into IT as well. Um, and right now, our IT department has two people in it. And in that report, you'll see the workload that they have on them. And, and basically, right now, we're, they, they're barely able to keep things running, never mind doing a new initiatives and, and looking at um, improving service or uh, taking on uh, new initiatives. Um, and um, you have to recognize that in the other departmental budgets, for instance, in the fire department, when they talk about adding a server to support the iPads, and that's great, we've got the capital cost for that, but who's going to support that and look after it after if that does add? Um, IT department is a department that's often overlooked as far as when you increase your business in other departments, their workload increases. And I think uh, uh, Jeremy put together um, quite a good business case on that position, so we're requesting that that position um, stay in, or, or we're recommending it in two of the um, cases that we put forward tonight. Thank you. Questions? Councillor Shinbein. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I'm having a little bit of difficulty with this particular one because, first of all, we're committing ourselves to an increase at 68500 plus benefits and cost of living and everything forever. <clears throat> and so I'm a little bit concerned about that. I'm also a little bit concerned that I get a recommendation uh, put on my desk and I'm expected to make a decision about that in a couple of minutes. I'm not prepared to do that. <clears throat> I feel this needs more discussion and I think the item should be flagged. Thank you. I, I was going to suggest that I would like to be able to read this. Uh, I certainly support um, the, the concept because I know how hard those guys are working up there. I provide them with a lot of extra workload. <laughs> um, but I would like to be able to read the report. So uh, what is the sense of the rest of the council? So we'll flag it for um, uh, consideration and try and get through this report. So, <coughs> point of information, when we do flag and have the discussion, we'll be able to have a closer analysis of the job description. Well, I, th I think by going through this report, we'll have a better understanding uh, uh, as to what the request is all about and why why the business case is there for it. Um, that being said, if we're flagging this and, we're, and we are um, going to uh, probably defer it for a decision until tomorrow, it may affect the process as we go forward in terms of, our, would we de be de delaying anything in a greater picture? No. no. Good, thanks. Councillor Hodgins. I certainly uh, support the flag. And from my position, I, I would like to have a conversation around to what extent we could contract IT services, understanding we have some full-time support now. So that I think that just, it, it's an appropriate conversation to be had. Okay. Um, thank you. I, I, again, do we, are these HR issues that we, perhaps can't answer tonight and, and perhaps should be in, an, in a different in camera. in camera. Yes, thank you. Okay, so we've flagged that one. Um, and Councillor Hundleby. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to ask a question uh, for you to Ms. Hurst. Just in regards of the dollar value that's there, does that include benefits or is benefits on top of that and we're looking at another 22%? It includes benefits. No, it includes benefits. Thank you. So the third um, request, uh, right now we have uh, bylaw enforcement uh, as well at a point six position so that we have that person um, for part time during the week and again looking at the strategic priorities and the backlog. There is a, 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 a short memo on that one as well for the back, there's a backlog we have currently of 156 bylaw enforcement uh, issues. Um, 
because we have a lack of resources to deal with those in a timely manner. So this will be actually the third or fourth time that this request has come forward to council at budget. Councilor Hodges. Thank you, through the chair. Well, certainly based on the feedback, the comments that I've received from the residents, uh, there would be, appear to me to be a definite need for a more actively involved and engaged by law enforcement system, and that's going to require full time to get to where we expect it to be as a council, in, in my opinion, and to get feedback from the, the residents. Thank you. Other comments? Councillor Morrison. Is it fair to say that in some ways this position would almost pay for itself or finance, be self-financing in that the more bylaw enforcement we do, the more you know tickets we can issue and penalties we can and bring our community across the community up to code and, and various aspects of violation. It won't make some people happy, but, it won't make some people happy, but, yeah. but you're, I don't think it would ever fully uh, fund itself, but you're absolutely right. There's a revenue offset to having more time to follow up on the bylaw issues. A lot of bylaw issues now, and um, you know, it, it's, it, you can go out and write the tickets, but unless you spend the time enforcing those or following up on them, um, it's, it, 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 it's kind of irrelevant. So, I mean, the, the bigger problem is we have a lot of violations that aren't being um, monitored we need or enforced. Some monitoring. And the, the upside of enforcing them is that we would get some revenue Absolutely. from that, but it would be justified revenue. Absolutely. Right. Um, second, uh, Comment. I just wondered if the CEO wanted to comment at all on shared services um, with bylaw officers. We have very similar bylaws across the region and, and uh, equally qualified individuals that could enforce bylaws in different across jurisdictions um, and on a more frequent basis than what each of us individually separately can do. So I wonder if you would comment on that. Yeah, I, I guess there's, um, there's a difference between shared services and also being a good neighbor and helping out done both. We've had shared services with Bureau when it came to building inspection. For instance, a few years ago, we used to have um, two uh, building inspectors, junior building inspector, senior building inspector. The junior building inspector uh, really only worked for us part-time. We, we had him on our payroll full-time, but then we had a cost-sharing agreement with Bureau, and that person would go to Bureau and help out with building inspections. But then it became, um, after a few years, it became apparent that um, or Bureau Royal indicated they had enough um, work for their own full-time person, so that agreement sort of came to an end. Um, until recently, what we, we had, our, our, our part-time building, our bylaw enforcement a person was also working in Bureau Royal on contract for the other two days that he wasn't working here. So you can sort of, I guess, say that that was shared services, but not in the same way that we've done it before. We also um, have done, um, uh, backup work for each other. If the building inspector or bylaw enforcement officer in Bureau Royal has been away, we've backfilled if we had the time to do that. It, that sometimes is difficult if you find yourself in the situation that we currently find yourself, where we have our own backup of 156 complaints. It's kind of hard to do um, sharing on a continual scheduled basis if you have so much work for your own so we try to do that and we, we have discussions about that on a regular basis. So I absolutely agree that, I mean, that's part of what we have to do is talk about those shared services when, when we can. Door is open. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Councillor Shinbein. Ah, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, staff. Uh, I'm looking at this, uh, increasing this position, and I have some... Uh, uh, concerns uh, simply because of the way things are done out there. Uh, I think this is an opportune time rather than increasing it right now, even though there might be a backlog. Because my question would be is the backlog on building inspections or is the backlog because we owe people a bunch of parking tickets? So I'm not 100% sure that the increase is, is warranted. I'm more of the opinion that we need to look at this, and this is probably an opportune time to do it is to maybe split it up. That building inspection is, is one particular type of bylaw enforcement and all the other things like parking in front of fire hydrants and, and what have you is a different type of thing and, and perhaps that could be contracted out as it's done through many of the municipalities in this area 
feeling from Victoria to Old Bay. Uh, so I think I would have difficulty supporting an increase in here until there had been a, a much greater study done. And also looking into what the other municipalities are doing for the, if I may use the phrase, ticket enforcement, as opposed to building inspection enforcement. Thank you. Any further questions? Councillor Hundleby. Thank you. So um, my question is more of a general nature. So on my page, I have things in black. I have things in blue. So uh, for the numbers that are in black, can I also assume that for the 3.61% scenario, the things that are in black are also still for that one? Yes, if you see no red on the page, it's still included in that second scenario. Thank you. So um, I have another question. I might just wait until we're completed and then I'll come back to it if I may. Okay. Completed this page? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any further questions around bylaw? Could we flag, or are we going to flag the bylaw officer? I haven't heard that yet. Would uh, you like I, it? I, I would like to have it flagged. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So we will find that on this one. Thank you. Parks. <coughs> Uh, Your Worship, the supplemental staff increase is for an uh, additional summer student uh, in our Parks Maintenance Division. Uh, as the previous council was aware, when they did the Craig Flower expansion, uh, the additional islands and the rain gardens, as well as some additional park property, growing season May through September uh, is, uh, of course, of great concern, making sure that the uh, grass is cut and the flowers are uh, and weeds are removed uh, is one of the highest uh, areas of concern for residents that we receive phone calls on. We have four summer students currently, uh, staff are requesting a fifth. Uh, and, and instead of increasing our regular uh, contingent, uh, we find the summer students to help with the manual labor uh, is uh, quite beneficial to the, uh, to the department. So uh, we're requesting $22,800, which is the cost of a summer student as a general labor for May to September. Thank you. Question, Councilor Morrison. Um, I'm not even sure about the legalities of my question or not, but I, my question is, are we allowed to put a condition on these student positions that they are Squamalt students, or Squamalt residents? I mean, there's such a small number, and I, I, don't, I don't want this to sound the wrong way, but I'd hate to see these funds go towards supporting a student from Oak Bay or Saanich or as opposed to our own students. I uh, worship through to Councilor Morrison, because it's not a grant, um, this is a legal employment contract. Uh, we are restricted under the uh, human rights legislation to ensure that we're not discriminatory across the board. But we do have a very detailed selection process um, to ensure that we're hiring the best candidates possible for as well. Thank you. Uh, question around uh, hiring an additional student May to September, so those are summer months. Why are we putting it in the annual core if, if we keep considering this every year? Uh, it's not, it's an annual core request because we have four traditionally. With the fact that we've just retained uh, and accepted through uh, completion of the Craig Flower Phase Two project, the, all of those additional uh, islands, uh, because it's now a core, an annual core, there will be no further core requests based on the current inventory of our park system. So as of next year, we would have five, and then if we wanted an additional, we would request again. It'd be a new core, correct. Okay. Thank you. Keep building islands and putting grass on my way. Thank you. Sedums are very helpful, eh? They are. <laughs> Any other questions? Seeing none. Uh, we are at the end of the staff. Oh, uh, Councillor Hendelby wanted to uh, follow up. Now. Yes, thank you. Um, so through you too, Ms. Hurst. Um, could you, if you wouldn't mind, um, just walk us through this last page around the staffing requests. So we've got budget requests of 80198 annual core increases of 155438 so almost double. 
Um, and so I'm sort of looking through quickly and I'm sort of struggling here. So I'm just wondering if you could just pick up the threads for me so that I better can pull this together. Okay, so, so first to deal with the difference between budget and core, your budget request this year, obviously partial, re partial year. So your annual core cost is an annualized cost for anything that's been prorated um, for a partial year. Um, I think that explains that. And what was your, your next question? And then the, the, the color coding or how, how that works, I think. No, that, that was fine. It was, it was the partial cost versus the yes. annualized cost. Yeah. And that we will see it rolled over into core for next year, we right. will not see it come as forward as supplemental, we'll just see it into our core That's assuming budget. it was approved. Yes, okay. assuming it's approved. Right. Council, we are at um, a uh, significant juncture in these discussions in that we move now to capital requests, which is a fairly hefty uh, document. And uh, so my suggestion would be uh, for your consideration is that uh, we complete the discussion um, uh, other than our in-camera for tonight where we are at at this time uh, and go to uh, Capitol tomorrow night with fresh minds. Uh, and be able to get right through it and then go to our flagged items in a, in a, in a holistic manner tomorrow when we've looked at everything, uh, recognizing that they, uh, one is from one budget and the other is, yeah, has one impact and the other doesn't. But um, uh, So uh, I put that out for your consideration at this time. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? So that we're going to we're we're going to move on now to the public input, and then we will go to our and, and any capital uh, items that we want to flag will be done tomorrow. Right. And we talked about right after. Yeah. And we go back. And, and then perhaps if we have enough time tomorrow night, we go through all the flags. Okay. And if we need more time with those, we take more time. Okay. So you're going to call the question. I'm going to call the question on that. Yes. All those in favor? Any opposed? Not a motion is carried. Okay. We now move on to public input. Are there members of the public that wish to speak? Please come forward. Identify yourself. You have two minutes at the microphone. Name and address, please. And thank you for attending. Are there other members of the public that wish to speak? Hi, I'm 
Michelle Mitchell from 999 Berkeley. And did you have a handout for us? Yes, I do. We're, we, we spoke, we were going to, it's a capital item, so we were going to do a handout. We wanted, you are available for tomorrow, so we wanted you to speak tonight, but we're going to do the handout tomorrow. When we spoke okay. To Thank and you. A picture's for a thousand words. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the neighborhood watch on Mercy Street is really concerned about the pedestrian safety. And we're absolutely thrilled that the engineering department has made a proposal for the first time in the history of this model to put a sidewalk on Wordsley. Uh, from discussions I've had with their department, it seems that their solution is to put a sidewalk on the north side of Wordsley Street. And my opinion is that a sidewalk on the north side of Wordsley Street won't solve the pedestrian safety problems for three reasons. And the first is, um, human consciousness always finds the best route, the easiest, shortest route to their destination. And uh, the easiest, shortest route to the destination that the people use is on the south side of the street. So they would not go up the hill to go out of their way to go to the shortest destination. And if that sidewalk on the north side was there, we would also create an additional safety problem in terms of channeling all the pedestrians to cross the intersection at the blind corner between Lampson and Wordsley Street. And I can't see cars zooming up Lampson, trying to go up the hill on Wordsley, stop there and let the pedestrians cross, stop on Lampson to let them cross. So point one is that a uh, sidewalk on the north side would not accommodate the human consciousness of the shortest, easiest route to their destination, which is the plaza, and it would create additional problems. The second point, uh, ooh, that was the second point. That was the first and second point. Um, the third point is that if a sidewalk is, in my opinion, if a sidewalk is built on, on the north side, in the long run, it's going to cost twice as much because in the long run, a sidewalk will have to be built on the south side. And that's the, the, the sidewalk on the south side is the one that's going to be used. So if one is on the north side, eventually one will have to be put on the south side too. And so I'm wondering um, if in the process of the council and the staff, if there's, in, I don't know how it works, is it like, yes, we vote for it, no, we don't vote for it, it's out of budget. Or if it's, oh, okay, well, let's look at an alternate solution for this year within, and maybe the solution is to do part of it or something like that. I think the reason why, in, in conclusion, I think the reason why the engineering department picked the north side is because it's the cheaper side to build on. And the, uh, situation on the south side costs a bit more. But it, it needs the south side to solve the safety problems of the pedestrians. Okay. Staff, just a, a question for clarification. Uh, this is within budget uh, uh, discussion tomorrow night, is it? On the right, and, and we've got a handout. We'll, we'll get that to you tonight so that you can digest it before the discussion. Okay. <laughs> Do we have any staff report as to the recommendation and costs, no, et cetera? Your director to speak to it. Mr. No. Director, are you prepared to speak to it tonight or do I you want to do it tomorrow night? High, I can give you some high level views so you can mull it over till the time. Uh, the line item is sitting under the capital sidewalk program. So it won't be, won't see something that says Wordsley. It's under the capital sidewalk program. Uh, my understanding is, is when this, uh, that program was put forward, the two main parameters that was uh, looked at was how do we increase our conductivity in our sidewalk network and how can we do it for the lowest dollar possible. Uh, those were the two main criteria that was brought forward before the council at the time. Uh, they endorsed those two and therefore those were the design parameters put forward. If council feels that uh, those aren't the parameters they want to go with, um, 
money fixes everything. Um, <laughs> there would be an increased cost to put it on the south side because there is a rock outcropping on the south side that we would have to go through. Um, to what that increased cost would be, I cannot tell you because we did not do a cost estimate on it. Um, I'm assuming at least double to what you see in the budget where we are now. Uh, the blasting part of it and the stairs that are associated with without uh, actually looking at it, I can't give you a better number at this time. But again, is if uh, council decides that's uh, the more appropriate side, um, again, like I said, money fixes everything. Thank you. Uh, uh, so uh, my question for clarification is that this is under the sidewalk fund, but it isn't the only item under the sidewalk fund. Is that right? It's, it's sort of buried in that Well, in that no, the, the general heading when you look under the capital projects is, it is on page two of five, and there's a general heading sidewalk, sidewalk construction program 2010-2018. There you'll see uh, from the prior year, uh, 35K. Yeah. That is for the sidewalk along the east side of Sioux Place, and the 22,000 is for the sidewalk on the north side of Worsley. Okay, so it is actually uh, a certain allocation right here, and that's under the supplemental yeah. uh, line item. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there other members of this public that wish to speak? Uh, uh, Lord Arca, I'll let you do the avenue. This got nothing to do with budget. Uh, there's another centennial taking place today. Oreo cookies are 100 years old. <laughs> Canada consumes 25% of their production. Wow. <laughs> I'll, I'll just add a little, a little anecdote to that. We actually did a little video congratulations to the Oreo cookies. Uh, I did with uh, um, uh, Ron what's Ron's last name, from uh, Parks and Rec, and it was fun. But I gather something happened to his camera and the film was not um, able to be sent, but it was a lot of fun doing it. So we sent them a card, I think, instead. And we did the photo op, yes, we did. We all had a, had a cookie. So thank you, thank you for pointing that out. Are there any other members of the public that wish to speak? Are there other members of the public that wish to speak?
with uh, regulations when it comes to people dumping, for example, leaving uh, items on the side of the street, uh, etc. Uh, I think it's important, and I'm glad to see, especially with uh, uh, Councilor Shumai talking about looking at alternatives, so addressing the issue, uh, but during your deliberations, uh, take into consideration that with a full-time bylaw enforcement officer, you have presence. With presence, there's confidence in the community, there's confidence in the council to show that any rules and regulations that you pass can actually be enforced. If, the, if it cannot be enforced, then though people might be violating uh, our uh, bylaws, if there's no enforcement, there's, there's really no way behind it. And of course, as Council Morrison has raised up, there's a great potential revenue uh, potential behind that. But more importantly, it does help to act pieces and uh, to not just uh, the squabble, but to this council as well. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Any other members of the public that wish to speak? Any members of the public that wish to speak? <laughs> no happy faces? Any members of the public that wish to speak? Seeing none, uh, I will call the uh, motion for adjournment. Move to recess? Pardon me, we're move, going to move to in camera. I need a motion to move it in camera. So move. If you could please, and then I'll have somebody mo uh, move it. Uh, the council holds a special in-camera council meeting on March the 6th, 2012, commencing at 9, 9 o'clock, 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 9 o'clock